Hello, it is 9.20 on August 26, 2023. I said to myself I wasn't going to do this again, and I took a good look at the resale market and saw how, chips, how, how cheap tickets were at Gateway, and I was like, why not? Why not get to see history of the Ultimate Tire Compound being run for the first time ever at an oval, and a chance to see Linus Lundquist in his first ever oval start? Yeah, why not? We're doing this again. Hopefully it'll be better than last year's. It should. After a period of experience in doing this, we'll find out. So, Indy cars are running on Sunday. I'll be driving home, coming home at midnight, sleep deprived as usual, and getting two hours of sleep for work, so that's great. Thanks NBC for having it pushed on a Sunday and not a Saturday night. And yeah, from what it seems like, this event needs tickets to be sold. From what it seems like, I got texts from <laughs> promoters desperately wanting some deals on tickets. So the crowd might be a little rough this year, so it's a shame because compared to 2019 before the pandemic, when it was a night race, the attendance looked pretty doggone good. But we'll find out. But we get IndyCars race on Sunday, and as well as Silver Crown Cars race beforehand. Wow, that'll be a first. Don't know much about Silver Crown Cars, but that's like all that usually run the small tracks. This is like a super speedway for them, so the opening act for them, those can be pretty wild from what I understand, so that's going to be fun. And we'll keep outlook for the constants. Like, gas prices, last I checked, was three seventy-five when I left when we go for our traditional four fresh fire stones and shell fuel. So that means it's guaranteed to be like four bucks or higher, because it's just tradition to just raise the prices as soon as I need to go for a big long trip. But yeah, we got five hours of St. Louis, leaving on Saturday, booking a hotel Saturday night. It's the road gets started. There's breakfast. I went against tradition. Went Metro Diner. Couldn't find the menu. Now I know what I want. It's gonna be good. If you know, you know. Oh yeah. Nothing like chicken. Alright, shroom break number one. Me and Wumi has stopped. We're back in the Illinois state line. The same rest area that we stayed in last year. Or not stayed in, but went to last year. It's not as good as I remember it being. It's kind of rough. I don't know because they haven't upkeeped it. And a little update. Asked for a paper map to the uh, the information desk. They had no paper maps. So minus one point. But it did give me this whole stack of Illinois Department of Tourism brochures. So that's wonderful. Probably nothing really interesting because I don't really have much of a purpose to go to Illinois other than the IndyCar race. Anyway, it is 12 12. Apparently, I just got word that uh, someone jumped it in I 70. So there's an hour delay over there for that. So that's great. I'm six, didn't, I kind of expected that out of Indianapolis, but not, <laughs> not over here in the middle of nowhere, Illinois. But yeah, it's probably heavy duty truck traffic over here. People being impatient. But oh well. We'll see you then. I've had a rough day. I'll explain that in a little bit. So I splurged. We're at the local to your new addiction. I'm at this taco shop. Got some chips and queso. Other food coming out in a little bit. Server right in my day. I'll fill that dude prompts. Where they put this fuzzy dust is. It's really good. My knowledge for and love for fuzzies is documented in a previous video. I'll upload that later because they got copyright striked. Because Detroit Red Wings, I guess. They're gonna have to roll me out of this place <laughs> when I'm done eating all this depression food. And we'll figure out if uh, fuzzies is good for depression food. By the way, I'm in uh, Manchester, Ohio. Or no, Manchester, Missouri. I'm not used to saying Missouri at all. Because I haven't been since Missouri since the pandemic. You know? Got beans, shredded chicken, and briskets. There's brisket underneath there. They don't look that great compared to the one in Toledo, Ohio, the last one, too. They made it taste better than they look. I don't know. I'll get you to I'll come back later. If I'm a member of the Queen's Plate Club tonight or not.
Well, that was a very interesting experience to say. It's kind of a more interesting, one of the more... <laughs> I don't know if the other ones I went to was really, really good, but that one's kind of like... That one's like a little sub part. Everything was just dry, kind of. It was still mostly pretty good, for the most part, but I've had the one Toledo I had over last year was pretty good. I will say that, that's for sure. But yeah, it's almost just me just not feeling very good. And yeah, but it's kind of an interesting little little ghetto manufactured little one. But hey, it's a fuzzies. It's still pretty good. Not the best fuzzies ever, but still it's pretty solid. It's better than most other foods, and the people there are very nice. They're very short staffed, so that doesn't really help the causes. Alright, on to the back to the room of death. Alright, let's do this take two where I'm cooled down. So long story short, I think I got scammed. <laughs> I was trying to get my reservation, and they said, oh, you're not a with my Indiana Farm Bureau account, because that was 20% off, and it, <laughs> on there it's like, oh, are you using the senior citizens plans? You can't do that, you're only, you're not a senior citizen, I'm like, no, it's Indiana Farm Bureau, but I guess whoever's working front desk that time was thinking SSO organization, like, senior citizens plan or whatever, uh, it doesn't make sense, anyway. It should have been 68 bucks a night. Ended up paying 104, so well done. That's uh, minus points. That's going to, that's going to corporate. I <laughs> hope you get my money back. Anyway, this place is kind of just weird and interesting. Someone, some poor old lady just tripped and fell like some sort of uncovered manhole, <laughs> and they're filing an accident claim. So that's wonderful. So this place is just absolutely dreadful. Anyway, sink, lights, coffee mug, fuzzies cup. It's a little small, quaint place, but for 104 bucks a night, that may do the price gouging since the race is going on. Sink. Decent sink. The dungeon that is the bathroom. If it turns on, yep. Dungeon. Oh, a nice little aura order. That shower. Shower looks okay. That's the chair that's literally at three feet from the thing. Two beds because. My one bed would have been cheaper, but that's great. And paying twenty bucks more for no, re forty bucks more for no reason whatsoever. Refrigerator, not using that at all. Microwave, not using that either. TV, desk for the Genshin Impact Wi-Fi stress test test. AC, it's doing a pretty good job. Don't know if any of those lights works. Everybody just chilling. I wish I could chill too. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, God. Well, it's a good thing these are going out of style like the Dota Bird, because... Yikes! Nope. Why would you advertise the hot springs, even though it's closed? God bless it. Why? I was, the one thing I was looking forward to tonight, because it rained all day, and I can't even do that. Boy, I'm getting this. This is getting ugly. This this score is getting ugly real quickly. Good night. Time to vent, man. <laughs> Dry towels. Not existent. What is this? What is this crap? Mad. All right. With this hotel being more and more disappointing by each passing day, we do have one more thing to check: the Genshin Impact Wi-Fi stress test test. Will it go or will it fail? Or it'll be an absolute disappointment and don't work like everything else in this hotel. This time, to keep it simple, it's going to be a pass-fail score. No letter grades. Just to keep things simple. Results of a few. And survey says... If we can avoid the flicker vision... Riveting content, I know. Very good. Good enough. Better than most. <laughs> Just about as good as my apartment. Pass. That's the one thing I got going for you. At the quality of all oh, Fallen, Illinois. Alright, that's it. Let's get out of here. Anyway, anyway, 
let's not stop having me just talking out of my butt and start actually talking about what we actually watch this video for. So I was in Mindy Cars. So first and foremost, I've not looked at anything yet. It rained most of the day, so I'm not even sure if they got any qualifying in. Because qualifying in practice was supposed, to got, was supposed to happen yesterday. And with how much it rained and the continuous drizzle we've gotten all day, we may have not gotten a single lap of qualifying in. Qualifying might be done tomorrow, for all I know. And <laughs> so that's one thing to know. We'll wake up at 9 a.m. and see, go to the track at 9 a.m. and see what we got. Which might put the Indy Lights race? Well, I mean, Sunday could be a full show. Could be Indy Lights, Silver Crown Cars, and Indy Car. All in one day. All before 3.30. 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. Anyway, before I pick Twit, before I qualify or anything, I have my prediction to win, despite Joseph Newgarden winning all the ovals this year, my pick, because I think it gets down to be a, uh, not a good race for me. I think it's going to be a willpower victory, which, not a, not a huge fan of willpower, but it does make, it does make IndyCar a little bit interesting. Although, the only thing that could make this trip even worse is Santino Ferrucci actually did good. And no one likes Santino Ferrucci. Speaking of Santino Ferrucci, it seemed like everyone on the state of Illinois trying to get here, between on Interstate 70, between Effingham and St. Louis, they're driving about, <laughs> their driving standards about as good as Nikita Paz Mazepin and Santino Ferrucci combined. So, a lot of cutting off, a lot of, a lot of piece of real estate, a lot of speeding. And that's a pretty interesting stretch because they're under construction because the state of Illinois is like, oh, let's just fix all our bridges. Anyway, enough ranting out of the way. Let's go check the IndyCar site. No schedule. Yeah, let's see. What we got? Did they get qualifying in? 3.30 in the big NBC. Yeah. No, did they even get qual? They might even get qualifying in. Practice tonight? qualifying race at Sunday due to rain. Oh boy, so nothing has happened. First practice starts at 7.45 tonight. So, wow. Practice, that's in Eastern time still. So practice just started. Oh no, 7.45 Eastern time. My computer is still set for Eastern time, so practice would have finished. So yeah, that's enough of that. So there is no nothing to talk about. So, I need to go check on the schedule and see when qualifying is, because that'd be awesome to see a qualifying show. Let's get a look. Did they get Indy Lights in? That's the question. Indy Lights, huh? Anything. We got perindycar.com. St. Louis area. Qualifying will start at 11 a.m., followed by the race at 3.30. What the heck are they going to do with the Silver Crown cars, then? Well... I guess I gotta figure that out too. Little momentum pull for four. Whoa, holy crap! So actually, with everything falling in line, the Indy Lights races an hour from now. They race Indy Lights under the lights. Oh, not. I'm sorry, I just committed a bunch of war crimes. I apologize to Indy, all the Indy car fans. It's Indy next now. Doggone it. <sighs> it's bound to happen. Anyway, well, I don't really care that much about the indie, indie next. I almost said it again. The forbidden word. Anyway, well, that's that. So there's not much happening tonight. So that's great. We'll find out. I guess we'll find out we get there in the track first thing in the morning. What's going to happen? Will we find out? <laughs> That's one way to block your tripping hazard. <laughs> Guess it happened after the old lady tripped and fell last night on the manhole cover. But now I just made it even less ADA accessible. It's a no win situation right there. Hello. Sunday morning. Race day morning. Here's breakfast. You kind of lose your choice until you get waffle. Apple orange juice, coffee, raisin brand, and, and bananas, well, like five left, milk, yogurt, that's it, no hot eggs, no, bit, no bagels, no biscuits, no sausage or eggs, kind of a subpar breakfast for 
a hotel this quality. Well, got one until the track opens. Gotta hurry up and get out of here. It's been a disaster. Really? All I wanted to do was to take a factory reset. Now the toilet decided to break. What the heck? It's not supposed to be running, eh? Like that. Eh? You know? That lever last night was flat like that. Eh? Now it's like... It's like broke like that. Eh? Must have broke the chain somehow. Well, that's great. If any... It's like Murphy's Law at this point. Eh? It's a slippery slope. Eh? What goes wrong... Must go wrong. Which means Santino Ferrucci is winning today. So one more thing I want to mention about the, well, about this hotel, about the over the uh, broken toilet, was the anti-price gouging act. So they charged me 104 bucks. So technically, the maximum rate is 90 bucks a night. I charge it here. So technically, that would be a lawsuit, wouldn't it? Oh. Well, that's why last out date it's kind of uh, 23, 30, 32 years out of date last day in August of 1991. Yeah, inflation has definitely uh, j definitely gone up since then, so it's probably like doubled if not tripled that. It's very important, innkeepers. Make sure you're updating your uh, whatever the heck this paper is because it might get you a lawsuit. I'm not going to do it, but... Careful. You need to call Yanfei if you do that. What do you think? What do you think? You better call this person. going to be calling your door. You better call Yanfei, man. Seeing these signs gives me bad flashbacks. Well, it's a variant XYZ has blown up. Or YYZ has blown up. In that case, I don't really care anymore. Alright. Hotel stay at a quality inn a little fallen done. Now time for my honest review because I had to do take number three on this because... The first one I did last night, it was just a mixture of a David Land Puma hat and Kenny Wallace what the hell's all over the place. Alright, let's give it an honest review. The beds? Probably the best beds I've ever slept on. I know I did see on the uh, Google reviews that they did replace the beds in 2023, so this year they're nice, soft, and good. Slept a good solid 8 hours and woke up at 7 a.m. just in time for breakfast to open up, which was... The breakfast was very below average. You had waffles, you had a bunch of green... Uh, you had, not a lot, you had six green bananas. And that was it for your fruit choice, just bananas or bust. They had toast, or white, or wheat bread. That was it, no bagels, no muffins, no biscuits, no eggs or sausage, which is usually pretty standard for most hotels of this price range. I mean, you're paying 104 bucks a night. I mean, I don't know if they're price gouging for the IndyCar race this weekend, or if it's just a normal weekend rate for that, and the whole spiel that happened yesterday kind of happened. The Hot Springs was closed, so that was disappointing. I was banking on that to happen because I had golf scheduled in St. Louis, but that got washed out because it decided to rain three inches in the morning. Nice 10% chance of rain there, National Weather Service. Got that right. No wonder why I'm not in this business anymore. In <laughs> the meteorology business. <sighs> so I got that. The toilet broke. So that was nice. I told the uh, front desk that the front desk the guy in the morning, who was very, very nice, he explained to me, explained everything to me. I, he let us like he'll fix that for us for the next guest, so that's good. They're on that. And we'll get that. And he also He gave me proof of my receipt. Which is good because it's just to make sure I wasn't completely and utterly scammed. Well, I did get scammed because I got overcharged 30 bucks because the dude beforehand said, Oh, you're paying the senior citizens rate, not the Indiana Farm Bureau's rate. And I asked the guy this morning and he said, No, if you if you book through this rate, you should be fine. You should have been fine last night. Like, well, he told me to cancel the cancel it because we're not allowed to accept it. Even though if your name is on the thing, it's the account holder's name that automatically goes on there. And if you don't match the name on there, even though if you're a family member, you can't do it. You can't do it. The dude said, oh yeah, we've had people all the time book under other people's names and the family members. Just give, if, they, if you have any questions, just give the family member on the call and verify that they didn't under their consent. Which makes sense. I had to 
a buddy of mine get denied at Costco because <laughs> he gave his, like, he used his dad's card, is it? And he walks like, no, 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 we can't do that. He has to, the person has to be present. So it must be just some disgruntled old person thing that's tracking down that because the person was kind of a little bit older that did this morning. The dude this morning was very nice. He had some, not a huge Pokemon fan anymore, but he had some pretty awesome Pokemon tattoos. Kind of a big Piplup fan, so had a nice, nice, beautiful Piplup tattoo in his arm. Tattoo in his arm. So that was great. Other than that, breakfast was subpar. Internet was pretty good. It did the Genshin Impact Wi-Fi stress test test very well. All of the phone, oh my phone's just kind of a crap phone. It's five years old. It needs to be taken out of the pasture sometime soon. It wouldn't connect worth a darn. So that's nice. And the location is very, very stupid. If you turn around this, you're behind this little strip mall. And the only way to get in is to pass that Starbucks over there. And it wasn't a problem today because the traffic was fine and people moving in and out thing. But when it gets to pumpkin spice latte season and all the white girls are getting their pumpkin spice lattes and that line's all the way around the door, you're screwed. You can't get in or can't get out. So location is much less, much more to be desired. The neighborhood itself is fine. There's a little rough around the edges, but just some normal working class neighborhood that we're in. There's a Walmart across the street, a Sam's Club catty-cornered to it. Nothing too, too really sketchy. It's just, just needs a little bit of love and care, like most working class neighborhoods do. Anyway, my official hotel reviewed for the quality in O'Fallon. For 104 bucks a night, and for what I got, and for the pain I had to go through, I can't really get this much more than half credit. Zero being the worst hotel ever, ten being the best. I'm gonna have to give this one a, a measly 2.5 out of 10. Now, if I were to give it a second chance, it would be not have the dude to check me in who checked me in. Give it a seven. I'll probably give it around a seven. So a little bit better than most hotels of this range. If it was, but no, that experience just tanks it and. I don't have to give it half credit for that, so that's a no. A no for me, plus the subpar breakfast and location not being that great. You could probably do better for 104 bucks a night than this location. And no. One thing I meant to add. No, I'm not hating on AJ Foyt. Because I'm going to the comments, Well, why are you hating on... Why the hell are you hating on AJ Foyt for? I'm not hating on AJ Foyt. I respect for what he does, and I respect his racing team. And I respect all the records that he's set. He set the IndyCar standard for all of dating back since the 50s. So, I don't hate AJ Foyt. I just hate Santino Frucci, because he's just... He's just a moron who doesn't know what he's doing sometimes. Give us another clear up, because I don't get that comment, fan. People love AJ Foyt. AJ Foyt's so cool. He's cool. He's just a little, he's just an old man. And there's Mimi. We're gonna get some four fresh fire sounds of fool's tank of fuel for pit stop. Stop number one. It is 8, 8.23 a.m. I've already missed Silver Crown's practice, so we're going in a little bit late. But next should be either Shell or the track. Eh, it's gone up, but not egregiously enough. I'd say it's about fair. I wouldn't consider it the bad luck. 385 is not terrible, considering that I've seen worse at elsewhere. Alright, the last park. Welcome to Joseph Newgarden, I mean, Worldwide Technologies Raceway. And there's Air Titans out, unfortunately. It's nice and cold. Oof. If it stays like this, it might feel like a night race on the track. But unfortunately, I think the sun's supposed to clear out, and I can already hear the copyright music already. Out in full blast. So that's great. Alright, let's hope they let us in. Alright, second time of the charm. I done goofed on the first one. You're not allowed to have two bags in it. Two bags in. But the second time they let us in. And now Silver Crown cars are on racing. They're in practice and qualifying all at once. They're trying to get as much racing as humanly possible in today. Anyway, we gotta find our seat now and see where we're getting. Try and catch the Silver Crowns and the cars in action. Eh? Here's the spot for the race, for the race day. Boy, these silver crown cars look tiny on it. I can believe we got the series, like the Cody Swanson Benefit series. Look how tiny these things are. Anyway, these seats are pretty doggone good, not gonna lie. 
Oh yeah, there's a look at the pylon, my pylon fetish. That scoring pylon. Very nice. And I gotta give a shout out to Drew Sayer at Landfill of the Landfill 500 from 2020. Shout out to Drew. About 40 minutes or 40 minutes left in the practice session. Anyway, this is like a Formula One style qualifying. They have a 40 minute practice session and your best time sets the field. I don't know who any of these guys are. All I know is that Cody Swanson, Bobby Santos, and Davey Hamilton apparently racing. I thought he was long retired. Eh? Apparently not. Eh? Will you see someone junk it? Eh? My guess is yes. Where? I don't know. When? Hopefully soon. Well, not hopefully, but probably soon.
Oh, I didn't know Kyle Larson was oh, It doesn't make any sense for Kyle Larson to be here. That's it. Coming up at 1220 p.m. In the meantime, lots of cool things to see and do out here, Eric. And uh, oh, yeah. Well, we also have Alright, IndyCar qualifying next, and apparently yeah, last night during IndyCar practice, uh, Marcus Erickson and Will Power jumped it, so they're going to be struggling today. So let's kiss the death there. Coming to his Chris Will Power yesterday, I picked him to win. He's on the back foot already. It's going to be a program. There's only five, a 10 minute break we'll between the, the end of no Silver Crown cars and in any car qualifying. You bet you're catching that, huh? That's kind of the other question we're watching. Let's reset the pile on it. We got some speed drag getting put down. You second. Silver Crown cars be leaking. Be leaking oil. That cleaned up. Hey, they are tight. The shrimp are coming. Or if they use manual labor and use brooms. Probably the latter. <laughs> Qualifying soon. Here's oh, yeah, so out oh, Ed Carpenter. Did you reverse order the point standings? Ed Carpenter uh, being last. Said, <laughs> Hopefully, it'll put a good one down. It's either front row or last row, Ed, one of the two. How about in between? Pretty handily by 
Alvis. Benjamin Peterson, so that's not good. Um, yeah, now comes Stingray Robin. And Zach and I have been around the place the past couple of years, so. Yeah, Going to the wall this week, Stingray. They sacked Jack, Jack Harvey. They put Connor in. Big happy. Also, Devlin's fastest. Edson still last. Slices his way through that third quarter. It's the 
and stays in the throttle. That car drifts up the racetrack a little bit out of turn four, but it looks fast. That big and black machine. I'm extremely salty. If his best two lap average, then he almost jumped it. And therefore, I'm very happy and feel vengeful on the inside. I don't know what they're doing. After further review, it's two lap average. Thank goodness. Puts redacted eighth out of nine. Ed Carpenter still last. Thank goodness. Terrible driving standards. Terrible. Well, it took 11 drivers. But little Dave finally bumped him, Connor Daly, off the pole. And the pylon's broken. I think it's a Santino Ferrucci fan. Let's go to Kuma. Yeah. Please don't wall it. We have registered Sato haters at this track last year. And they're probably back this year, I'm going to take a guess. Still at the top of the boards. Sato's the 15th qualifier. Thank you. 
just like that with that bot. Yeah, you know, he, you know, he needs some consistency. Um, just to have him in the corner. Shepard Light for Felix
Golly, it's like he's setting the internet. It takes for a million years to get everything set up. Oh, we can't see right there. Cross down here. Cap 7 11, 06. No, they just gave up. I would too if I were to. Alright, I'm gonna watch Will Powers run. He was one of the junk cars. And this could be wicked. Let's see how this goes. Christian Lugard is 
My money's on, he'll put it in the perfect uh, pole. Not big on this off. Alright, I lost even more money. Had I only slot in second. Big Chunk is still for this from pole. Starting worst case fifth for Big Chunk is. But when this guy exists, your hopes are pretty slim. You're going to keep that pole position. This guy might put up a bit of pole, but he's got nine place grip penalty for engine change. So he's not on pole. Joseph Newgard is going to try and teach his bus, bus bro what's best. Oh yeah, and Pelot's got a 9 place grip penalty too. Not that you have to go conservative in these, in these situations, but if this trap won't bite if you get too greedy. Yeah, I think he would be pretty happy that. I mean, just a good racer. I guess Scott just a good race car. The 
strategy. It is now to bring the so the inside row four for Tacoma. Uh, be a quicker, but that's pretty good. Not too shabby. Yeah, I know you're disappointed you didn't get the pull, but that was a heck of a qualification run. Bill Hill back from Connor Daly from his first car back in. Uh, yeah. He's going to be very happy to have all the other carpenter cars yeah. behind him and all of his teammates behind him eh? for the weekend. Maybe he lands at Ray Hall next year. Starts on the season, four wins, a couple of poles, eight the top three finishes, 11 top fives, and 14 top tens. And it's 61 career start to the year as he wins three poles. He gets 23 times, baby. He's finished in the top three in 61. I mean, in that show, right? He's almost a two time champion. And and it was getting the job down from the time he said an IndyCar, he's just consistent. He's, he's a good guy, I just hate seeing all the con controversy around him, but he's really going to accept that. Oh yeah, who knows what the heck grid penalties are like. What Scott says is true, there's seven people getting grid penalties. God knows what the starting order is going to look like. This place is going to be lunch. That course is screwed around in the merchandise tent and the cluster that it was. No longer I've seen Canapino Argentina themed Indy 500 jersey. So I wasted my time. There was no line, and now the line is a great stack. Just want to get for taking the risk. It's Brody. Hi, Brody. Well, there's the lunch. Courtesy of Guido's Mississippi Barbecue. Got some chicken chips, got some greens, and Coke. They ran to die. <laughs> Diecast Reviews, a.k.a. Brody, a.k.a. the guy in Wind Valley 820's vlogs. I should have asked him for a picture, but I didn't, I was just too nervous. So that's unfortunate. I'll tell you how this is. Report back in a little bit. Alright, missed the command of the Silver Crown Cars. Had to hit the shroom room first. 100 laps, 125 miles. And these Silver Crown Cars. I'm out of breath, running out of the stairs, trying to get here in time. That's eh? one lay down. We're gonna see all laps of racing. Oh, oh. let's take it out of here. Four crowns in the out front 100. Cody 
Swanson will leave the field now. That's right, Three E's into turn number four. Slowly towards that green flag. from Muncie, Indiana. He must be a pay driver because he's related to the family that owns Sam Pierce Chevrolet car dealers in Muncie. Sam Pierce's quality is somewhat questionable in terms of car service. Better than the, at least better than Dodge dealership. I would know from experience. Caution laps do count. They do do green white checkered, so... Got back underway, got pushed by a push truck. And we restart lap number eight. Even the 
different cars. Cody Swanson takes the leader. And now the Jumbotrons on the Fritz. This race has been so crazy thus far. Even the Jumbotron race. Green flag.
dropped like a rocket. And there's oil out there. Big sideways oil from 77. He's certainly going to have some overheated tires right now. Oh, he's going back up. What's happening here?
drama. Drama down the stretch here. The East Texas Silver Crown Stars. That's ultimately also a Not a lot of laps to go. Six laps to go, five to line. Looking like a green white checkered finish. All right, NASCAR style green white checkered decided. Who wins this one? David Hamilton Jr. first, Bobby Santos second. And the Hill Garden Racing Team third. What's wrong with that 19 car? Who knows? Is it brakes? Is it steering? Is it an engine? Property Chevrolet, Benjamin Peterson! 
Yeah. <laughs> don't, let, don't let FP1 will roast you with his failure. Starting 24th in the 12th row, another rookie driving the 51, Bio Haven Honda for Dale Coyne Racing with Rick Weir Racing, Stingray Rock! Yes, Stingray. I want my kid FP1 will already roasting you. Starting at 23rd, driver number 20, Award right now. Award. And here to present the NTT P1 Award is one of the guests of NTT 
GG. You have to use during driver instructions though. And wait, or you could have done it earlier. Starting in the ninth position, inside order five. Wow, he nine for Kyle. Wow. The Oakville Salinger Racing Chevrolet, Callum Isla. Hey, Callum. Wow, who the Salinger is going to be ecstatic with that. Row four outside, starting eight. The two-time NTT IndyCar Series champion, 2018 winner here. Technology Raceway, the number 12, Verizon, Team Penske, Chevrolet, Will Power. I would boo you, but Santino Frucci exists. And Will Power makes IndyCar good. Starting at seven, driving the number seven, Arrow McLaren, Chevrolet, for IndyCar oh, yeah. champion, Alexander. Rossi! Yeah, Rossi! Starting in the third row in the sixth position in his home state of Illinois here to race today. The number 18 HMD trucking Honda for Dale Coy racing with HMD. David Balucas! Yeah, little Dave. Here the Fritz. Oh, wow. Starting fifth, driving number 28, is a Pana AI DHL Honda for Andretti Auto Smart, Roman Grosjean. Roman Grosjean for Andretti Auto Smart. Eh? <laughs> Row two, outside, starting at four, driving number six, Austin A. Aaron McLaren, Chevrolet, Felix Rosenquist. Yeah, please. Starting in third, driving the number five, Errol McLaren, Chevrolet, Pato O'Warren. Get Pato. And out of the front row for today's race, starting in second, driving wow. the number 26, game for Jonathan Andretti, Auto Sport, Colton Herna. Yeah, big chungus. Oh, that means... Oh, he's the man himself on pole. Oh, boy, this might be a runaway. <laughs> yeah, Joseph. <laughs> Going for the oval sweep this year. Can you say that the race has ended before he even starts? <laughs> Let's hear it for your starting lineup for today's Bavarino Automotive Group 500. Well, as much as I want to see this guy win, it's pretty hard to bet against Joseph Newgarden. I also think he's going to win. I hope I'm wrong, because it might be a... And not by mechanical means. I want to see a good race. It's nice and cloudy. Sun peaked up a little bit. But it's pretty overcast. Race time soon. Feels bad, eh? There's a flyover. A little late, but it'll do. Better late than never. Your attention on the grid. Your attention on the grid, please. At this time, we ask all drivers.
Drivers, report to your cars. Drivers, to your cars at this time, please. today. I want to personally welcome the thousands of race fans today here at beautiful Worldwide Technology Raceway and the millions more watching from home. This truly is one of the greatest shows on four wheels. Okay, get off. Dad, this one is for you. Drivers, start your engine! IndyCar Series starting lineup presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Low 14. Autoquín Canapino, Argentina. Autoquín Canapino, Argentina. Low 14.
that rear end of a Yonkers Sink Canapino. Oh man. Well, that might be an avoidable contact penalty for Augustine. That might put him a lap down. Since he's already last.
often. Never mind. What the heck? All right, take two. Let's try this again.
And considering all the pain I went through this weekend, with all the rain and stuff, it definitely wasn't worth the trip. And the rest of your podium, Lucas, Rossi, and Ultimately, like I said, the crew uh, happy to be back in St. Louis. And uh, had the voice of Alexander Rossi. Alexander Rossi will finish Saying they appreciate IndyCar bringing the alternate tire here, but it's still impossible to race here. Well said. Well said. That was a choo-choo train of a race. And that was probably the worst race of the season for IndyCar. Not gonna lie. You props to Dixon for throwing the, the fuel strategy off and getting lucky with the caution. But yeah, you can't, you just can't pass here. Especially, at least in the daytime. It's either gonna take a repay from the track or this race be ran Saturday night. I don't know what else they can do to make this better. But oh well, it is what it is. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, let's welcome the winner of the Bomberito Automotive Group 500, ladies and gentlemen, Scott Dixon! And here to present the winner's trophy today, Chuck Wallace of the Bomberito Automotive Group. Well, that should do it for the vlog. Scott Dixon wins a confusing race, but did it the most Scott Dixon way ever. Fuel saving and tire saving his way to victory in what was a quite a boring race. Not gonna lie. Not really worth all the hassle and pain I had to deal with for the past few days of just wasting money on getting scammed out by having to double book a hotel because for some reasons but they need to do something with this track. Either move it tonight or just move it to a different oval, I think. Because as much as St. Louis is a good track, and it just needs a repave. It's just one groove racetrack. The Indy cars just can't race here. As Alexander Rossi said, something just needs to be done. That's that. Anyway, thank you for watching. And hope it didn't race. Hope it didn't suck. It probably did though. See you then. It's all going smooth until we hit the Indiana state line. Eh? Gotta love it. All these morons in the right hand lane will need to get over. Cause it cuts down to one lane over here by the state line. We're still technically in Illinois. But the road work starts right at the state line. 
love any arrow construction. Why? How on earth have I gotten stuck behind two of these in the same night? This one right in the heart of Indianapolis. Oh gosh. Oh well. Well, hope this video is going about as good as what Benjamin Pearson's race is calling it.